Hi there, this is Dustin at Drone Tribe, and I'm going to go through airspace for the remote pilot knowledge test. This is one of the harder sections of the grass for non-pilots. You may have already started studying airspace, but quickly realize this wasn't something you could just wing on the test. You may even be thinking, why do I even need to learn this? I'm not a real pilot. But it's actually extremely important to learn the airspace and have it down pat, not only for the test, but because when you are flying commercially under part 107, you're going to want to be able to quickly recognize when you will or will not need air traffic control authorization. Alright, so with that said, let's jump right into it. Right here we're looking at a VFR sectional chart right now for the San Francisco area. This is Class B, or Class Bravo, airspace, and it surrounds our nation's busiest airports, such as LAX, JFK, Philadelphia, Dallas-Fort Worth, and in this example, San Francisco International. Bravo airspace is indicated with a solid blue line on aeronautical charts. Typically, it consists of a surface area with at least two layers or shelves, and you can see how the altitudes change in this chart. These altitudes are in MSL, or height above mean sea level. So here, the airspace is between the surface and 10,000 feet. Over here, the airspace is between 2,100 feet and 10,000 feet. And then finally here, the airspace is between 3,000 feet to 10,000 feet. Remember that the altitudes on aeronautical charts are listed in hundreds of feet, so you need to add two zeros to calculate the actual value. Now, think of Bravo airspace in the shape of an upside-down wedding cake, where each layer, or shelf in this case, is a larger radius as you go further in altitude. Bravo airspace is controlled airspace, so you'll need ATC authorization when flying within it. When flying drones in Bravo airspace, you need to understand how each shelf relates to AGL, or above ground level. For example, here we have a vertical obstruction that is 1,814 feet above MSL and 977 feet AGL. If we were to inspect it, we can only fly 400 feet above it, meaning that we would actually penetrate into the Bravo airspace above. Generally, Bravo airspace is from the surface to around 10,000 feet mean sea level. Class C, or Charlie airspace, surrounds our nation's large airports, such as Portland, Charleston, and in this example, Monterey International. The airspace is indicated with a solid magenta line on aeronautical charts. There are several shelves here, starting from the surface all the way up to 4,200 feet, then 1,500 feet to 4,200 feet here, over the ocean, 2,500 feet to 4,200 feet. Again, all of these elevations are in MSL. We notice this difference in shelf bottoms, and that's because the height MSL of the actual airport is 257 feet. Charlie airspace is controlled airspace, and you will need ATC authorization when flying within it. Generally, Charlie airspace is from the surface to around 4,000 feet mean sea level, but that can change depending on the altitude of the airport and other factors. Class D, or Delta airspace, surrounds our medium-sized airports, as in this case, Salinas Airport. The airspace is indicated by a blue dashed line on aeronautical charts. This symbol here represents the ceiling of the airspace, which is like a three-dimensional cylinder from the surface. In this case, delta airspace is from the surface up to, but not including, 2,500 feet. The negative symbol in front of the number means it is up to, but not including. Delta airspace is controlled airspace with a control tower, and you'll need ATC authorization for operations within it. It's important to note here that this blue circle is actually a compass rose and does not indicate airspace. It's easy to confuse this with Class Bravo or Class Delta airspace. It's placed on sectional charts to indicate to the pilot cardinal points such as north, south, east, and west. Let's take a look here at Class E, Echo airspace. This airspace can be slightly confusing and many people miss questions on the remote pilot test because of it. Class Echo airspace is controlled airspace and requires ATC authorization for operations within it. This airspace is indicated from the surface up to 700 feet above ground level with a dash magenta line. The magenta vignette, the faded circle, indicates Class Echo airspace from 700 feet to 1200 feet. Here at the Crossville Airport we see that this is Class Echo from the surface up to 700 feet in this area right by the airport. Then around here is class echo from 700 to 1200 feet. Below this area from the surface to 699 feet is class G, golf airspace. Golf airspace is uncontrolled airspace that does not require ATC authorization to fly in. 
Granted, there still could be other flight restrictions, but in terms of ATC authorization, you're fine. All right, so let's just jump right into some of the example questions. So you've been hired to inspect the tower under construction at 46.9 degrees north and 98.55 degrees west near Jamestown Regional. What must we receive prior to flying our unmanned aircraft in this area? So the first thing I'm going to do is go to the testing supplement and refer to figure 26 and take a look at area 4. So right here I'm actually going to jump right to the answer. Uh, using our latitude and longitude we're able to find the tower. Um, so there's actually two ways to do this. So obviously the latitude and longitude but also the UC is indicating that this tower is under construction. Um, and now I understand that because of the legend in this chart supplement. So from here I understand that I'm within this magenta dashed line as well as this magenta vignette. So I definitely know I am within class E airspace in this case between this surface and 700 feet. So in that case we're definitely going to need authorization from the air traffic control. Alright, so for question two, the floor of the controlled airspace overlying the Sandpoint Airport is, um, and we have three options here. So referring to figure 22, we're going to find area one, um, and we find this airport. We see the magenta vignette around there, which indicates class E airspace between 700 feet and 1200 feet. Um, so the floor of that is going to be 700 feet and we know that this class E airspace is AGL above ground level. For question three, the elevation range of the class B airspace in area five and figure 25, we're going to take a look at the sectional chart here. Uh, we're going to see that it's between the surface and 11,000 feet MSL. Um, remember that class Bravo airspace is going to be indicated in MSL above mean sea level. Question four, you've been hired to inspect the railroad near Kokolala. I think that's how you pronounce it. <laughs> Do you need ATC approval? Um, so again we're back at this Sandpoint Airport. Um, we're going to take a look looking around. We're going to see that Kokolala is actually a little bit south and it's out of the Magenta vignette. So in this case it's going to be class golf airspace which is uncontrolled airspace. We're not going to need any sort of ATC authorization or approval. And here we have question five. What is the ceiling of the class D Delta airspace surrounding Majors Airport? Uh, when we refer to figure 24 in the northeast of area one uh, we're going to be able to see the dash blue line which indicates Delta airspace and within that um, is this symbol here which is going to be indicating the ceiling of the Delta airspace. So in this case it's going to be 3,000 feet MSL. Alright so that was a very quick and dirty um, airspace for remote pilots. If you'd like to get a little bit more information, um, a little bit more learning, um, we have example questions with solutions just like this. We also have another written guide um, and there's a link below this video for that.